So at PAX East this year, which was 2017, if you're watching this video in the future for some reason, a few of us from Rusty Chains got to try out a bit of Raid World War II. See, that was me, and, and that was Raid. We played a demo that was about 10 minutes long, and then got to talk to our friends from developer Line Game Lion and publisher Starbreeze afterwards. The demo made a huge impression on us, and we have a lot to talk about. We didn't record gameplay, so the background footage for this video is trailers from Raid or Payday 2 while using the historical weapon pack, which we think is a fitting choice. We're using Payday 2 as a background because the comparisons are unavoidable. Many things are similar. Both games are first-person shooters with up to four-player co-op. You mod your weapons and then use them to steal valuables or weaponry. You fight against the force that vastly outnumbers you, and that force has special enemies. You can mark these special enemies for teammates, and your characters from unique nations will call them out. Now, this comparison is not inherently a bad thing. The vibe we got from our time with Raid was that Payday players will feel right at home, but the game does stand on its own very well, and will be easy for people who haven't played Payday to slip into on their own. The demo started with all four of our characters in a basement of some sort. It served as a safe area where we could hang out before going to start our mission. Ilya from Lion Game Lion explained to us after we finished the demo that we could come here to mod our weapons as well once we had the full game. He made it clear that realism was the driving force for weapon design and modifications on the development team. The example he gave us was that in real life, pistols can only receive barrel attachments if there was a certain type of wood on the pistol. Applying that attachment in game would mean the aesthetic of the gun would completely change to match that real life wood. Small stuff like that. Another thing that stuck out to us was that each of us had different weapons corresponding to our character class. Rusty Chains members got to use the Assault and Sniper classes while we were playing with other streamers, so we're going to focus on those two classes throughout this video. Assault started with an SMG, pistol, and the famous Potato Master Grenade. The Sniper class started, as you might have guessed, with a sniper rifle, but it also had a different pistol and the same grenade. Something neat about the Potato Masher was that, unlike Payday 2, activating the grenade does not throw it instantly. Your character just holds it out. From there, you can throw it like a normal grenade or use it as a melee weapon. Doing so has a slight chance to explode, which will deal massive damage to both you and the person you hit with it. After taking a few moments to familiarize ourselves with our weapons, we started the mission. We were flung immediately into action as our four-player team was instantly met by a hail of gunfire while we stepped off a boat and onto a beach controlled by the Nazis. The Nazis were rushing at us, and we had an initial moment of us all circling like idiots. As I sprinted into cover, I noticed my armor had depleted a lot even though I'd barely been shot. That's when it clicked in my mind. It wasn't an armor meter circling my health bar like in Payday 2, but it was a stamina meter. That was a welcome addition after being a Payday player, who just had to kind of mentally estimate my stamina throughout the series. We finally got a feel for the environment as we noticed our characters were shouting about the objectives. Nobody was in our ear relaying what to do, there were no radios, it was our characters interacting and formulating plans on the spot. They were positively oozing personality in the way they interacted, but we'll speak more on that in a bit. We fought through the beach and I came to a staircase which had a Nazi at the top of it. Whether it was coincidental animation timing or an AI tactic, I don't know, but the Nazi leapt directly over me and was already shooting me before I had time to spin around and fight him. After I dealt with him and began reloading my weapon, I noticed things in Raid were a bit slower than Payday. Reloads were longer, and sprinting through firefights wasn't as viable as taking cover, especially compared to Payday 2 and its dodge system. Not that this is a bad thing. I actually welcome it. Payday 2 was more arcadey, whereas Raid takes more time to push up and get ready for these pushes, so you need to be more thoughtful in your movements. This was enforced by the fact that, during these reloads, your character calls out when reloading, so you know to cover somebody who'll be out of the action for a few seconds, instead of Payday 2 where, you know, you can probably reload in under one second if you build your character right. I ran up those same stairs and heard one of the other players come onto the voice chat and warn of a sniper on the side of the tower we had to climb. I took note of the clarity that the voice chat had, especially in comparison to Payday, then took out the sniper before joining the team and climbing the tower. We fought our way up, floor by floor. We started to run low on resources, and we weren't picking up huge quantities of ammo from every enemy like Payday. Health or ammo were rare drops from dead enemies, and even though it was possible to survive on those drops, it was tricky. Ilya came over again and explained to us that every level has crates scattered throughout, which we can break open for ammo, grenades, and healing items. 
Once we knew to start looting crates, we were much better off in terms of supplies. It again reinforced the more tactical thinking of raid. Supplies were common enough that we never ran out, but if we weren't careful, we came close to it. We had to be more careful about our shots and where to grab ammo. We also found ourselves communicating more as a team to relay location of ammo or grenade drops. What was also really cool was that instead of just blankly staring at ammo until it floats into your gun like in Payday, the characters actually reach out and grab it when you interact with the ammo or other pickups. We climbed a ladder to the top of the tower where we encountered our first of a few small issues with the demo. The ladder led immediately into a doorway, so detaching from it to squeeze in was a bit sticky and took a few seconds. We actually thought we were getting stuck on other players, so the ladders were a bit iffy in that area. Now upon getting to the doorway, we were greeted by a brand new lockpicking minigame. An image of a lockpick is presented inside a rotating circle with a small gap in the circle, and you have to press your interact key as the gap in the circle lines up with the tip of the lockpick. Ilya later explained to us that these would grow more complex on higher difficulties and in certain areas, with as many of three of these circles rotating in different directions and even reversing direction at a time. He wanted lockpicking to be more of an interactive experience, rather than just hitting F and watching a bar like in Payday. Once we eventually got through the doorway, we were in a train depot on top of a large bridge. The tower we fought through was one of the supports holding up the bridge. We fought more Nazis throughout the station as we placed some remote explosives in various areas. We brought the fight a bit of the way down the train tracks, but we were repelled as an airstrike fell nearby and forced us back to the cover of the depot station. Out of the smoke from the airstrikes came our first special enemy of the demo, the Heavy Gunner. He marched on towards us, armed with an MG42, and it took all four of us focusing fire on the armored bastard to bring him down. The character that got the kill called out that the gunner was taken out, and it occurred to me that we could mark and call out special enemies in the same way as the Payday 2 system. I got to test the idea before long as another special enemy spawned in behind us. This soldier had slightly less heavy armor, but carried a flamethrower instead. He was appropriately dubbed the Flamer by my character as I marked him. There was some nice character interaction when he died too, this is that personality I was talking about. I killed the Flamer enemy, and my Russian character exclaimed that the Flamer was burnt out. The British character ran past and remarked that this was a terrible joke and my character should stop making it. That put a smile on my face, because in games like Payday, you know, characters will make these jokes and say like, You know, they make these jokes and, you know, players kind of groan a bit. But in Raid, the other characters are making fun of each other along with you, and that really helps make it more relatable. As relatable as it can be when fighting Nazis. While my teammates set the remaining explosives throughout the station, I climbed to a catwalk overhead to see if I could fight the Nazis issuing suppressive fire against us. This time, I didn't have any issues with any ladders. I was surrounded quickly and had to jump off the catwalk. The fall damage was higher than I expected, and I was down pretty quickly. My teammates were cut off by the Nazis and didn't get a chance to revive me, so I was killed and found myself in spectator mode. The demo was set to low difficulty, so I had a one minute timer until I respawned at the top of my screen. While in spectator mode, I noticed my biggest issue with the game, which is admittedly a small nitpick. Your teammates' ammo and health, which you can usually see during gameplay, is unavailable while you're in spectator mode, which means I didn't know who I needed to assist when I came back to the game. But after we concluded our time with the demo, I spoke to Ilya about that, and he mentioned that they would work on adding it to the game, so we'll see if that criteria holds up when we get to launch. I got back to the action and respawned just before a train pulled into the depot. The remote explosives we placed earlier detonated and derailed the train. As we fought towards the front of the car, where our loot was resting, my war cry ability was ready. Each character class in Raid has their own war cry, which is a unique buff to them or their teammates. You can use them all at once, or stagger these abilities. As an assault, mine temporarily caused my grenades to split into smaller cluster bombs, which was very useful against crowds. Ilya explained that the sniper's war cry gives a few seconds of auto-aim, which can be upgraded to target the enemy's hearts directly and eventually even their heads. We entered the train car to find 12 crates full of gold bars. Upon picking them up, they were not replaced by a generic bag, but were actually represented by a case of gold loosely tied to the character's backs. We were told that every carryable loot item in Raid, be it gold, weapons, or anything else, will be displayed as what it is, and not one for all carrying item like in Payday with the duffel bags. Now, 12 crates of gold was a lot, and I really can't wait to see how much more there is on higher difficulties, considering we were on easy mode. 
The area to secure the gold was back on our boat down on the beach. I tried to toss some of the gold and didn't quite make it to the boat. Ilya came up behind me and urged me to jump off the bridge. Not wanting to disappoint the developer in his own booth, I jumped, and to my surprise, I floated nicely back to the beach as my parachute deployed. Another player followed suit. The two players who were still on the bridge with the remaining ten cases of gold died. I panicked, now being at the beginning of the level with my teammates dead as far away as you could possibly be in the demo. I secured my gold case on the boat and began running back for the team. I didn't have to worry though, as securing the first case qualified us for victory and actually ended the demo right there. After the demo, we spoke with Ilya again, and we've already covered a lot of things we spoke about in that talk, aside from the elephant in the room. The diesel engine. Payday 2 players know the engine is chugging from a combination of its age and the amount of updates it received for Payday 2. Raid was performing surprisingly well, though, and Ilya and Almer Listo both assured us that they knew about the game's engine trouble in Payday 2's recent history, and actually reworked large portions of it to improve performance for Raid and make sure that the engine stays stable. Overall, the game was quite solid and a lot of fun. We're excited to do coverage on Raid World War II when it releases this summer, and we hope you guys are excited to see it, at the very least. Have a good one, and stay rusty.